So question. Does anyone in here have any younger brothers or sisters? Mm. All right. Uh, Blake, uh, younger brother or sister? Uh, both. Both. Uh, <laughs> how old? Uh, freshman. Age. Freshman. Okay, so freshman sister, brother? Sister. Sister. Now, um, when they were younger, did, did you uh, ever go to the swing set with them? Yeah. Did you ever push them on the swing? Yeah. Did I ask you this last year? So. Okay. Hold on one second. So, you had a sister. You, would you take her to the swings ever? Yeah. Now, when you were, uh, would you consider yourself a nice older brother or a mean older brother? Nice older brother. Nice older brother. So when you went to the swings, what did you do? How, how do you push the swing? You, you, you push and then you walk away and go talk to your friends? So she comes back and I Ah, you wait till she comes back, and then you push again, right? So, so you were you say you're nice. Would she say you're nice or mean? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Well, let's say there's. I say there is a nice way to do the swings, and then there's a mean way to do it, the swings, right. right? Okay. So, so what's what's the nice way? So the nice way is you push, and then they go out, and then they come back. And then when do you push again? Once they're on their way, starting on their way back. Well, after they've gone past their highest point, and then you push them again, right? So you, so you go push, forward, back. Push, forward, back. Push, forward, back. that right? Like that? Oh, sure, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I mean, you keep on going hard enough, and then eventually they go around with something. <laughs> Only on chain swings. Yeah. So, um, what's the mean way? You push them while they're coming push back. You push them, and then on the way back, what do you do? Push them again. Bam! What happens? <laughs> they fall off. The they fall off, and they fall down, and then they, they cry. And they, Mommy, they push me on the swings! And she's like, What? Push me, and then yeah, and then they get all angry and like all that. Yes. What? So, all right. And then, and then, and then, for the rest of the life, their life, they uh, they are angry with you for this incident on this one. So anyway, so anyway, so what's the point? How do you how do you how do you do the pushing thing? You wait, right? When you agree. That proper swing technique. You guys know how to how to push yourselves on this, how to pump on the swing. Yeah, right? yeah. All right. There's a proper technique. There's a proper time to do that. What happens if you do it at the wrong time, like on the way back? Slow down. Yeah. Right. It actually causes yeah, it causes you to slow down. So you want to wait until you're going. So any pushing that you do, you want to be doing positive work. And how do you do positive work? <coughs> In the direction you're moving, right? But if you, but it's all about the timing, right? If you get the timing right, you'll go higher and higher and higher. But if you don't get the timing right, what'll happen? Slow Nothing. It'll be herky jerky and awful. Again, this idea is all about timing. It's all about timing. And there's this idea that you can get really, really big swings if your timing is correct. But if it's not correct, what happens? It gets all involved. Nothing. Weird, yeah. Nothing happens. You get all herky-jerky and nothing happens. Right? This idea is called resonance. And you've heard, raise your hand if you've heard this word before. Right? Everybody has, because you probably did it last year in physics class, and if you played an instrument, right? It's all about resonance. All right. And what resonance is, is it, it, the technical uh, expression is large amplitude oscillation, so big motion that results when you force something to vibrate at or near its natural frequency. That's how you break glass. That's how you break glass. Let's, let's talk about this for a second, though. What's the natural frequency of a swing set? How could you figure out the natural frequency of that? So with the length for the frequency. It's just it's just uh, two pi one over two pi root, root g over l, right? So for a swing, it's two pi root g over l, which is the 
Or sorry, 1 over 2 pi root g over L, because it's opposite from period. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so frequency, when you swing something, when you force it, when you push it at the same frequency that it would naturally oscillate, you will get resonance. And resonance is the swing gets higher and higher and higher. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, forcing it to vibrate. And this is true for any musical instrument, this exact same effect. All right, who, uh, does anyone play anything? Who plays oh, yeah. something? Carla, what do you play? The flute. The flute, okay. So how do you set up the resonance in the flute? You have to like, how do you set up the resonance in the flute? You have to like lower your ear into it at a certain speed. Yeah, but what's setting up the vibrations that's causing the oscillations at or near the natural frequency of the flute? Like the way that the air vibrates inside. Exactly. You have turbulence in blowing over the top causes a little vor vortex inside that pushes the air. Right? And that causes the air inside the flute to go and to resonate. Yes, it does. <laughs> That's the sound of a flute, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, for a swing, if you had, say, a two meter swing, uh, you could figure out the natural frequency. Uh, it would just be one over the period, which would be one over two pi root g over L, which would be uh, whatever, about 0.35 hertz for a two meter swing. That means uh, about uh, it takes about three seconds to uh, swing. Now, uh, so that's neat. That's resonance. Um, we actually need to... Uh, I need to show you a fet.colorado.edu simulation called Waves on a String. I'm actually in the process of recreating Waves on a String for iPad right now. It's not ready. Um, I just started this morning, about 7.30 this morning. Waves on a String is one of the best. Um, so I'm going to pull that up on the big screen. So, damping is, uh, is friction, and it turns out, we're not going to talk about waves in this class, but we are going to talk about oscillations in simple harmonic motion, right? So, let me switch back over. It turns out, if you have no damping in a system and you set, and it's like a spring mass system or a pendulum or something, you pull it to the side and let it go, what's going to happen? It'll just keep on going. And what's true about the amplitude of the oscillation the whole time? It always comes back to the same spot, right? But if you turned on friction, what would happen? Uh, yeah. If you had only a little bit of friction, it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and eventually die away to nothing-ish, right? That is a situation called underdamped or underdamping, all right? Now, what happens if you put on so much friction, so much friction that it can't even get back to the beginning very easily. Like, you pull it this way and it's like a really squeaky door. It's like... <laughs> Does it oscillate at all? Oh, no. Sorry. No, 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 no. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, just checking. No, he's not. He's not okay. All right. Okay. If there is too much friction... When you agree, it's it's not it's not gonna go it's not gonna overshoot at all. It's just gonna take forever to get there. Yeah. All right. So the, it turns out, say you want to design a system, and this is actually very very common in engineering. You want to design a system that doesn't go wappa wappa wappa. It just goes right back to the beginning, just boom, as quickly as possible, without overshooting. How much damping do you need? You need just the right amount. You don't want to go past. 
but you don't want to take forever getting there either. The amount of damping required to do this is called critical damping. All right, critical damping. Um, and blah. let's say you're designing a door. I open this door. Does this door automatically close? No, no that's a crappy, oh, it doesn't have a door closer on it. Let's go to one that does automatically close. Wow, what could that use? Critical damping. Could use some, some damping, right. So this one automatically closes. See that? Isn't that cool? And like instead of going wham, it's got a door closer on it. Now you don't want that door closer to take too long, right? Because then it's like, okay, waiting for it to close. And also you think of the like the old school like western saloon doors, you get to know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like it comes in, ah, who's the sheriff in these parts? And the door's going whappa 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 behind them. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Uh, what kind of damping is that? Non that's under damping. There is some damping. It will eventually stop oscillating, but that's under damping. Think about a uh, car suspension. If they had too much damping, yeah, it'd make it very difficult to open as well. So they, they, they make them under damp and they make them swing both ways. Think about a car suspension. What kind of damping do you want? What's the advantage of having not very much damping in a suspension? It's, very soft. it's a very soft suspension, a very cushy ride. What's the advantage of having a, a lot of damping? It gives you more control. More better control, right? What's the ideal amount of damping in a car suspension? In between the two. In between the two. I would argue when you're designing a car suspension, you want to have the car be critically damped. Because you're not going to sit there and do the whoa, whoa, whoa thing whenever you go over. But I used to have drive one of those. It was fantastic. It was like a 1990 Mercury Cougar. Oh my God! It was called the Coug. And yeah, it was great. It was like it was like 25 feet long and only held two people. And it's like the size of this room. And it was like you're like. Didn't kind of, didn't really matter what you did with the steering wheel. It you know you'd go like this with the steering wheel, and the car would just go straight. <laughs> it was awesome. It, oh, it was horribly scary, particularly in the winter. But yeah. my my wife actually uh, got an an engineering internship at Ford one summer, working in suspensions actually, and uh, she uh, she said she showed up at Ford in this like old Mercury Cougar and everybody loved her because like, it's it's Ford Mercury and Ford right like if she would have showed up in like a Civic everybody would have been upset but they loved the fact that she was driving a Cougar so anyway so anyway so critical damping is one of the goals in uh, vibrations you're designing a system you want to have a system that's critically damped usually there are times when over damping is good and there are times when under damping is good, but usually critical damping is the goal. Uh, I think the extra credit I have for you uh, it goes a little bit along this lines. It, it turns out that when you have under damping, um, it actually slows down the, the uh, frequency of the oscillation just slightly when you add damping. Um, but the easiest way to think about under damping is you have a sine wave. And what happens when you multiply a sine wave by a decaying exponential? You get a decaying sine wave. Does that make sense? So that's kind of the math behind it, right? So you can, you can tailor the amount of time or the amount of wobbles you have or the amount of time it takes to decay away if you just do the decay constant of that particular uh, exponential, decaying exponential that you're multiplying the sine wave times. So anyway, that is damping and that is resonance.